So today we're going to model out this sample blog post right here. And the way that I typically like to do content modeling is in a program called Miro. And we'll link that in the lesson. Miro is a place where you could break apart this page into a bunch of little sections and then write your content models for each section in a really organized, easy to manipulate place. So I use a template when I'm building out a content model. And in that template, there are these little blocks that represent topics and assemblies. Topics and assemblies are both different content types that can exist in a content model. A topic is something that can't really exist on its own. If you were to think of a blog post category in the travel example, the blog, post, the blog post category is just travel. That travel category can't necessarily live on its own, and so blog categories would qualify to be a specific topic. The blog post itself is kind of a composition of a bunch of smaller components. We have a blog category, a title, an author, so a blog post is what we would call an assembly content type. And I have these two content types separated by color right here. I also have sticky notes to represent different field types that you could add to your content type. There's Boolean, text, date, time, all of the ones that you'll see in Contentful when you're building out a content model. And then the purple field represents a reference field. In a reference field, this is actually where these relationships are defined between different content groupings. And we'll define those relationships with arrows from one content topic or one content assembly to a content topic. So beginning with the topic. So we're going to start content modeling on this sample blog post from the luggage company. And the way that I like to content model is going section by section down the page and taking screenshots of the individual sections and building the different components from there. So starting with the top, we have this breadcrumb here, which says travel and then the luggage, um, the blog post title. Travel represents a blog post category that this blog post belongs to. So in my mind, travel should be, or blog post categories, should be its own content type. If you can see over here, we have blog category. That is a topic, because blog categories cannot exist on their own. Blog categories only exist when they're referenced by blog posts. On blog category, we have a component name. This is just an identifier, so it makes it easy for you to find a specific entry within Contentful or the headless CMS that you're using. And we also have category name. In this case, the category name is travel. So if we go back to some of the issues that we had talked about in our list of requirements, one of them is a lack of redundancy in our blog categories. Um, we had an example where there were two blog categories. One was European Union and one was EU and different blog posts that belong to each of those. We don't want something like that to happen. We also don't want to have multiple content items for travel. So we want to make category name unique. We'll talk a little bit more about validation in a later lesson, but I just wanted to call that out here. So going further down the page, there is the blog headline. We have the author, a date, and an image. I want to start with the author because it's similar in an approach that we used for blog category. Um, author is also a topic. And we have component name. This is actually going to exist on every content type that we create. We're also going to need another text field for the author's first name. 
and their last name. As you can see, there's no other information we need here. Um, this by that you see there, that can just be generated um, automatically. We don't actually have to create a field for by, unless you did need to edit that. Um, and if you do, I'll show you how to do that when we're building the actual blog post assembly page type. Moving further down the page, uh, we have all of this content here. But before we get to that, I want to focus on this bottom section. So it looks like we have two cards down here that reference other blog posts. And there is a image, a heading, and a subheading. There's also a call to action. So I went ahead and created a content type called card. Card is actually an assembly. And on card, we're going to have a few fields. One of them is component name. Another one should be a reference field that references a blog post. So let me copy that field. When you reference the blog post, we can pull in that blog post's featured image the headline and the subheadline. We also need to have a reference field for a call to action. The reason that we're doing this is because things like read more are going to exist in a lot of places on your website or on in your content uh, project. So we want to encapsulate read more into its own component and this will enable reusability. So We'll reference call to action, CTA. For that specific call to action, we need a text field for component name. We also need a text field for the text itself, the text that reads uh, read more, CTA text. And then we also need a URL. So CTA URL. And this will be where the click goes to. So now we want to make a reference from the CTA field to call to action. So CTA can pull in a call to action component. Now I think we have all of the individual pieces and I'm going to focus on the actual blog post assembly content type now. So this is the blog post. It starts off with a component name just like the other ones. Moving down we have the post headline or the post title. This will be just a plain text field. We also have this date field. That's going to be a date time field, which you can get here. And that will be publish date. We have our author. That's going to be a reference field. And that will reference one of these author components. We have a blog category. That's another reference field. We'll do post category. That will reference this entry of blog cat category. 
We also have a featured image. So we didn't actually create our image component yet. So let's do that now. So an image is going to have an image file, but it's also going to have some alt text. And it's helpful to keep that information together so that anywhere on your site or in your project that these images are used, you can also reuse the same alt text. So we have component name, we we'll also have alt text, and then we're going to have a media field for the image file. So now going back to the blog post, we'll have another reference field for featured image. Moving further down to this gray section, this to me looks like a rich text field. We have a heading right here, a subheading, a bulleted list, uh, we have an image here as well, and some more heading and subheading text. So this should be a rich text field. And all of those different elements that I just listed off, those will also be a part of your validation. So when you're configuring the rich text field, you'll specify that you only want a certain type of heading, some body text, uh, you want to accept bulleted lists, you'll also want to be able to reference the image components. Um, so I'll pull in a rich text field right there. So post body. Post body should be able to reference an image as well. Further down on the page, we have this related article section. And if you remember, we modeled out these two cards as this card component. And the card component is an assembly that can pull in a blog post. And we'll set up our front end to show the featured image, the heading, and the subheading on the blog post, as well as the CTA that we specify. So for this section, we just need a, another reference field where we reference the two cards that we want for our related articles. So we'll create another reference field, and I'll title this Related Articles. And now we can pull in a card. And that's it for our blog post. So what we did here was extract out the pieces of information that could be reused down the line. And that's an important thing to think of as you're modeling your different pages. So as you're walking through the page that you choose to model, um, whether it's on a website or on an app, wherever it is, try to think about where that piece of content can be used elsewhere within your project. For example, we have authors right here, Joanna Smith, and we abstracted that from the blog post itself. That enables us to use this author's name in any other place that it may appear. Let's say we have a different type of blog that we launched on the line, like more of a resource center, and the same author was authoring a new resource. We could then pull in the author's name and we wouldn't have to worry about making updates in both places. If we made updates to the one entry of our author's name, it would show up in both places. Similar with um, our image component, we can enforce certain validation rules. Um, if you remember, we created an alt text field on our image component. You can actually make this field mandatory so that you can make sure all of your images on your website or uh, wherever they're showing up have alt text. 
And again, we'll talk a little bit more about validation later on, but that's just one way that abstracting these different content models can help you in your project overall.